Hey everybody, Damo Skyfire here, and this rant video is on something that's been bothering me for a little while actually, and that's the internet's morbid and completely out of left field dislike for Roman Reigns. Now me personally, I'm a fan of Roman Reigns. I think he's got good presence, and I definitely think the dude's got the potential to be a big star in the future. But you see, in typical internet fashion, the man's been getting pushed to the top of the card and the man's been getting pushed to the top of the card hard. And since he's the company's new chosen top face of the future, man, you would have sworn that the IWC just ate a bunch of laxative laced brownies because they are shitting on him hard. And you see, to me it's kind of funny because it's gone full circle, this Roman Reigns hate. Let me take you back to 2012 when the Shield first formed. Obviously, within the group, you had Roman Reigns. You had Dean Ambrose, who was formerly John Moxley of CZW fame. And Seth Rollins, formerly known as Tyler Black, predominantly of Ring of Honor. Whereas, of the three, Roman Reigns, of course, had no prior indie experience. Roman Reigns has the pedigree of being of the famous Samoan Anawaii family. Before that, he was a standout college football player as a lot of John Laurinaitis's signings were when he was in charge of developmental. Now then, when The Shield debuted at Survivor Series 2012, the IWC was overjoyed to see that Dean Ambrose was finally getting to do something big. Dean Ambrose was a favorite for many, many years on the indies, as I said, and his original feud with Mick Foley, which was the plans for Ambrose, fell through. And a few people were afraid he might have wound up on the chop chopping block, excuse me, somewhere down the track, due to the fact that he was yet to appear on the rebranded NXT. Seth Rollins was, as I say, another indie standout, and he was the NXT champion at the time. Now Roman Reigns, on the other hand, had only just re-debuted on the now rebranded NXT for a month, working a free agent gimmick not too dissimilar to MVP's original gimmick and as I say he had no prior indie cred he was pretty much straight from Florida Championship Wrestling where he wasn't you know exactly a major standout wrestling as Roman Liaki and the question I find most often getting asked on places such as Squared Circle on Reddit was well why did we get Liaki as the third member of the Shield why not Cassius Ono you know, he's out of place in a stable full of these indie standouts. He doesn't have the same credibility they do, so why would they bother to put this guy in a stable with them? But as time went on, people were proven wrong, and Reigns proved that he did in fact have the credibility and the ability to stand with the other two. There was no weak link in the shield because they all worked so well together, Reigns included. And as time went on, Reigns started drawing some really strong reactions from your casual fans. WWE management started noticing this, and Reigns was pushed to the forefront of the group as the group's powerhouse. You know, doing things such as eliminating majority of the Survivor Series team at Survivor Series 2013, or breaking Kane's long-standing Royal Rumble elimination record. And with the Shield's immense popularity, it was only a matter of time before they turned face. And they did for a brief cup of coffee before Seth Rollins turned heel and they split. So in the aftermath of that, Rollins and Ambrose started feuding, but then Roman Reigns was the one that started getting shoehorned into the main event scene straight from the get-go, rubbing shoulders with the big boys such as Kane, Randy Orton and John Cena. And the IWC was not amused. Ambrose and Rollins were their, were their guys. And... It wasn't too long before the IWC then started jumping on the Reigns is over pushed, we've seen this shit before, limited move set, yada 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 bandwagon. Now then, I heartily disagree. Okay, I've got to say, I'm a fan of Reigns, I like what Reigns brings to the table, don't get me wrong. I like Ambrose, I like Rollins, I, lo I love all three members of the show, I think they're all great, I think they've all got a bright future. But for me, I think the Reigns hate is ridiculous. Now let me pick apart these common arguments. Reigns is terrible on the mic. I wholeheartedly disagree. The man has presence. 
He's not as flashy as, say, an Ambrose with his nervous stuttering when he cuts the promos. He's not as naturally smarmy or unlikable with that lispy, slimy voice that Rollins has. What Reigns has is that big, booming, powerful voice. When he says he's going to knock your teeth down your throat, you shut up because you believe it. That is where Reigns is not weak on the microphone because he says what he has to say. You listen, and that's all he has to do. He doesn't have to cut a massive old-school mankind-type soliloquy because it doesn't fit his gimmick. His move set is limited. Okay, I understand this argument a bit because you often see Reigns resorting to three moves. Samoan drop, Superman punch, spear. And the fact is, again, this is a case of he doesn't need the flash and flare. He may have those three moves predominantly, but he does them well. That spear looks like it could kill you. That Samoan drop looks like it could break your fucking spine. And that Superman punch looks like it could knock your teeth out. Okay. One of the problems with John Cena is people complain about his shitty moveset looking like it couldn't hurt a fly. And it couldn't. The attitude adjustments still look sloppy and shit after all these years. Roman Reigns' moves, however, look like they could kill a man. The man legitimately looks tough, and again, it suits his purpose. Roman Reigns is getting pushed too fast. Eh, okay, this one, I can see where that argument comes from, but again, I disagree. The main event scene is very limited, and again, all you ever hear is Cena and Orton burying guys. Reigns is one guy that actually allowing to make look strong. Yet, the IWC seems to have a problem with it mainly because he's not their guy. Okay, I understand that, but now Ambrose and Rollins are getting a bit of, you know, exposure too. So, I really don't see the problem. Reigns is clinging onto the shield gimmick too much. The others have evolved and moved on. Reigns is clinging to the past. Well, naturally. The others at least have sort of money things going about them. Ambrose could still do the crazy thing with or without the S.H.I.E.L.D. gimmick. Rollins naturally couldn't continue doing anything S.H.I.E.L.D.-like since he's the one that betrayed them and he's playing the sneaky, smarmy, corporate-backed heel. So that leaves Reigns. You're trying to essentially get him across as being this big, tough ass-kicker, which is essentially what the S.H.I.E.L.D. were. Three tough ass-kickers. So I don't really see the problem. No one complained say, back when Kevin Nash and Scott Hall were still doing the NWO thing in, say, late 99 because it was the natural sort of step from the guys. Hell, even 10 years ago they were still doing essentially the same thing. I doubt Reigns is always going to be Mr. Shield Cutoff 10 years from now. But I digress. As I put together this video, Reigns is in the hospital, and I wish him the best of recovery. As I say, though, there is a lot of criticism being leveled at Roman Reigns at the moment. Personally, I think a lot of it's unjustified, and I think a lot of it is major tall poppy syndrome from the internet wrestling community, as usual. I'm Damien Skyfire, and thanks for watching my rant on why Roman Reigns really isn't as bad as everyone makes him out to be. Till next time.